The introduction of the Nintendo Wii brought along with it one of the most popular video games of all time, Wii Sports. We all know it, we all love it, and due to its overwhelming success, of course it was only a matter of time until it received its very own sequel in the form of Wii Sports Resort. And wow, what a step up. I mean, seriously, everything about Wii Sports Resort outshines its predecessor to the point where going back to the original Wii Sports is almost pointless, unless you're wanting to relive any memories that the original provided you with all those years back. So right away you'll notice that Resort has more than doubled what the original game had in terms of sports to play. Rather than the 5 from before, we now have 12 which include sword play, wakeboarding, frisbee, archery, basketball, table tennis, golf, bowling, power cruising, canoeing, cycling, and air sports. So let's go over each of these games individually and see why they are such a step up from the original Wii Sports in terms of quality. Starting off strong is Swordplay, which sees you facing off against a computer player or one of your friends. The concept here is very simple, just attack your opponent like a maniac until they fly off the platform. You can hold B to block, but most of the time in this mode I just flung the Wii Remote around until my enemy was defeated. This is a first game on the list, but somehow one of the best, as its level of replayability is insane, and that's not even all. Along with this standard mode, there's also two others. The next one is Speed Slice, which requires actual skill, especially if you're playing against a real human and not just a computer. Here you need to be the first one to slice the object in the correct direction in order to receive a point. First one to 10 points wins. Lastly, there's the Swordplay Showdown, which in my opinion is the best version of dueling in the game. This mode sees you facing off against a myriad of opponents one by one until you reach the boss at the very end. There are 10 regular stages which aren't too difficult, but it's once you beat these 10 stages that things start getting really difficult, as you unlock the reverse mode where you play through the same 10 stages from previously, only reverse this time, and the enemies are much more difficult. So overall, the Swordplay is probably the most fleshed out game in Wii Sports Resort, but that's not to say the others are bad, far from it. In fact, the next event is Wakeboarding, which is the most satisfying game to master here. The goal is to flick the Wii Remote to receive more height, and while it may have inconsistent results at times, nothing beats the feeling of perfectly landing all of your flips and finishing with a massive score. This one is also tons of fun to compete against friends to see who can score the greater amount of points. Wakeboarding has no sub-games, so it's on to the next one, Frisbee. This one is also enjoyable but very hard to master. All I know is that I most definitely sucked at it because for some reason I could just never get a hang of the controls. The objective here is to throw the frisbee to your dog within the ring of points and hope that you throw it accurately enough to score a big number. There's also frisbee golf which is even more inconsistent than the original mode but still very enjoyable and relaxing. This is also a very satisfying one to pull off once you get the hang of it. Archery is one of the few games which requires a nunchuck to play, and surprisingly, it responds quite well. You're taken through a number of different courses with each one progressing in distance. The Wii Remote is used to simulate the bow, while the nunchuck simulates you pulling the arrow back and aiming. This feels great and I'm surprised they were able to replicate the feeling so well within this controller. This is certainly one of the more innovative uses of the Wii Remote. Next up is Basketball, which is probably the most inconsistent game here, but somehow still ends up being one of the most enjoyable. The goal is to score as many points as possible within the allotted time limit. Consistently swishing the ball is one of the most satisfying feelings in Wii Sports Resort, and though it may be very difficult to handle the inaccuracy of the Wii Remote, if you can play its little game and learn how it works, then you'll feel great completely embarrassing your friends at this. The sub game is a 3 on 3 pickup contest which works great in multiplayer but kind of falls flat if you're playing against a computer because they just kind of stand around and do nothing like idiots. All things considered, you can do some pretty cool stuff here such as dunking and shooting 3 pointers. This is just dumb fun that you can have at any time. Table tennis on the other hand is very accurate and responsive. The movement of your paddle is replicated perfectly with the Wii Remote, which puts this in the same realm as the original Wii Sports Tennis. It feels almost identical to that, but even snappier due to the tight controls and limited range to move your player around. The sub game sees you trying to score as many points as possible in a row, but if you miss just one ball, the game ends. I like this one too, and the added bottles you can hit in order to receive extra points just adds an extra layer of depth and strategy to this challenge. Golf is pretty much the exact same here as it was in the original, so there's not much to say, but overall, it feels a bit better due to the refined controls that came with the time Nintendo was able to spend working on the Wii Remote between the release of Wii Sports and its sequel. 
But as always, golf is super peaceful and definitely the most relaxing and laid back sport on the list. Bowling is also nearly identical to the original but feels much more accurate. I don't know if it was just me, but the ball seems to go exactly where you intend it to, 90% of the time as opposed to how it worked previously. The standard game is just more of the classic bowling we all know and love, but this time it offers two sub games. The 100 bin game is up there with Swordplay Showdown for being the best games here. This is infinitely replayable, just like its counterpart in the first game, except this time it's 100 pins instead of 91, and on top of that, you don't start from a couple pins and work your way up. This time you get to bowl for 100 each and every round. This is just another example of a great time waster you can share with any friend, and it's always a great feeling to improve and knock down more and more pins every round. Spin control is the other mode, and it's not the best. It's nothing terrible or anything like that, but it's just boring compared to the 100 pin game. Basically the goal here is to just knock down as many pins as possible without throwing the ball into an obstacle. There's not much more to it. Jet skiing, oh, I'm sorry, power cruising, is an awkward little experience. You see, the game requires an unchuck in order to replicate the feeling of handlebars, but the controls are so wonky here that I feel like no matter what I tried, I would end up foolishly swerving out of bounds and getting yelled at by the game for it. I don't know, maybe I just really suck at video game jet skiing. Next up is canoeing, which is another pretty awkward sport to control with the Wii Remote. It's much better than jet skiing, but the problem here is that it's just flat out boring. I'm not sure how Nintendo thought canoeing of all things would be fun in a video game, but oh well. I mean, what we got is more than acceptable, but that just doesn't stop it from being a bit of a drag. Cycling, however, is pretty good. This is one of the longer games here, with the objective being to come in first place while you race around Woohoo Island. The catch is that you can run out of energy and burn out if you're not careful, so it adds a level of strategy not really present in the past few sports I've mentioned, which is a nice breath of fresh air. I like this one for its overall energy and the amount of chaos that ensues here as you desperately waggle the remote and nunchuck in hopes of landing first place. Lastly, there's the air sports which are calming in a totally different way than golf. There really is only one main objective here, that being to collect these eye points spread throughout Woohoo Island. These serve to give out information on each location you find one of these points in, and I found cruising around the island to be a great time, and it's actually a pretty great stress reliever. Some of these eye points are in pretty tough locations, such as this one hidden within the volcano, and I love trying to collect these by doing some advanced maneuver. The other mode is dogfight, which I was unfortunately unable to play due to a lack of a second player available at the time, but oh well. Overall, Wii Sports Resort is the definition of a perfect sequel. It took everything from its predecessor and approved upon it in every way. The returning sports were much more refined and enjoyable, whereas the brand new sports offered immersive gameplay and true challenges for those wanting to compete against their friends. Add this all together with a great soundtrack perfectly reminiscent of an island resort, and you've got yourself a pretty great time right here. It's a shame that Nintendo Switch Sports failed to capitalize on Wii Sports Resort, but hopefully one day, Nintendo finds their footing with this franchise again and delivers something even greater than what we were left with on the Wii all those years back. Well that's gonna do it for this video everyone, I hope you enjoyed, let me know what you guys wanna see next and I'll be sure to make it happen. But as always, have a great day and I'll see you next time.